Father, you are worthy and you are great. And Lord, I don't know what all the needs are that are represented here in these cars around us. And in our community, I don't, I don't know what all the situations may be, but I, Lord, know that we're all here a needy people. Our nation is a needy nation. Our world is really, God, right now suffering in a way. And you understand, Lord, you know what we're going through with. And I just pray, oh God, that you would just give us strength. God, we rebuke this disease that's come across this world. And Lord, we know that you're able to stop this. And Lord, we know that you're in control. We don't know as far as what the end times are going to bring. But God, we know that you're in control. I pray for your divine protection around our people. I pray, oh God, Lord, those that may have other needs, financial, emotional, physical needs that are represented here today, that your Holy Spirit would reach down and touch them. Give us strength. We give you honor and praise today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to uh, thank you, musicians. They're going to be coming back in just a few moments. But this morning, I want to share with you a message. Uh, uh, the last two weeks, and again, if you have internet or whatever, you may have uh, or you may have seen our message and know what we've been preaching on. The Lord laid on my heart to share a series of messages entitled uh, "Heroes of Faith." Heroes of Faith out of uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and today I'm going to be talking about it's really part three and I'm going to be talking about Abraham and Sarah Abraham and Sarah and I'm going to look in Hebrews chapter 8 11 8 through 12 and it says by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going and by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in the multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Again, then we're going to continue this series of chapter 11 of Hebrews. It lists 18 people or groups who the writer attributes to great faith. And as I mentioned, if you've missed, it, missed this series, I want to encourage you to go back and look, it is on YouTube, I believe it is. I uh, uh, believe it's been put there. Uh, if you don't have Facebook, you can go to YouTube and look at these messages to get the full scope of our series. And we began it with an introduction and we talked about heroes, what heroes were and what faith was. We looked at last week the pre-patriarchal men that this writer lists and it's Abel, Enoch, and Noah. Uh, and it, it is important to recognize that a hero, in the, in the meaning that we as gave it, or we saw, or looked up, it was a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievement, or noble abilities, or noble qualities. And in today's culture, a hero is someone who has accomplished something, a, a feat, uh, for example, uh, we use this example uh, in our uh, one of our previous messages, but uh, if a person hits, and, and I'm a sports fan, I like basketball, if a person shoots the basketball uh, right at the buzzer and wins the game, they're a hero. Or maybe they make a touchdown at the last moment and win the game, they're a hero. Oftentimes in our culture, a hero is an event. It's what someone does at one time. Uh, maybe it's several things that they do, but uh, their heroes are uh, considered in our culture for a, 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 uh, an effort that they did. Maybe a wartime hero. Now this is 
uh, to another level. Uh, uh, but a wartime hero who saves other people's lives. And this takes the hero to another level, but it's an event that takes place. But I believe the heroes that are listed in Hebrews uh, are men and women who live a lifestyle of courage, a lifestyle of admiration, especially in the eyes of God. Therefore, the heroes that we're talking about is, are not heroes that, uh, 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 that, that perform an event or accomplish an event or a certain thing in life, but they're heroes that live a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. They are people that are separated, idealized for their courage or achievements uh, or their qualities of lifestyle. And such is the case with Abraham and Sarah. The writer of Hebrews includes them both, not just Abraham, in this list uh, of faith. And why is this, uh, these two so important? Well, in reality, they are the foundation of the Jewish nation. They're the foundation of the Christian nation uh, in reality because we are adopted into the vine. <coughs> so we see here that it is so important that Abraham and Sarah, we look at their life and see why they are a hero. And, and they're an example of the faith that goes far beyond their own lives. Last week, I believe it was, I mentioned a song that uh, uh, I remember years ago uh, being played and sung by a contemporary Christian group. It was a man that you would write about. And, and the song says, oh, I want to be a man that you would write about. Uh, and, and a thousand years from now, well, Abraham and Sarah were people, <coughs> people that could be written about a thousand years from now. Let me get some water here. When you haven't preached in a while, you get choked up sometimes. <coughs> Thank you, wife. Good helpmate for getting me some water. So, Abraham and Sarah that will last and pleasing to God. So this morning, I want to look at three tests that Abraham and Sarah had. And these same tests could be applied to tests that you and I may go through with. Number one is the test of leaving their country. In Genesis chapter 12, verse number one, the scripture says, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Abraham was 75 years old. When he left Canaan, Sarah, Sarah was 65, or when he left uh, uh, his homeland, Sarah was 65 years old. And moving at any age would uh, be quite difficult, I would say, but I would think in biblical days it would be most difficult in moving in so, such a diff distance that they had, move, had to move. Adding to this would be moving to a place that they had never seen. I want you to imagine moving to another state uh, and that you've never been there before. You wouldn't know the, the, the temperatures, the culture of that state or that place that you're moving to. And I'm sure that it was very difficult for Abraham and Sarah when God said, just get up and move. Go. Go to a place and I'm going to lead you to this place. And so, uh, can you imagine what Sarah might have thought? Sarah might have said, honey, are you sure we need to go to this place? Are you sure? And, and, and uh, I, I'm just going by, you know, human nature never changes. I know cultures change, but human nature never changes. And if it had been my wife, she would have been saying, are you sure we need to go? Uh, you know, what, what's it going to be like? I have no idea, honey, what it's going to be like. What's the temperature going to be? I have no idea what it's like. Well, and, and she goes on and on and on and says, what, and, and I'm sure that Sarah probably said the same thing, but she, like my wife would have done, I know, she would say, well, honey, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to go wherever you go. And Abraham and his wife, uh, they went to this land of Canaan without knowing where they were going. I can relate a little bit because we did the same thing when the Lord called us to Russia. I'd never been, didn't know what it was like, but the Lord called us and we took a step of faith. Basically, God was telling Abraham to leave everything that he was comfortable with and go to this unknown place. Everything that he was comfortable with. This was a test, a test of faith when God moves us out of our comfort zone. I'm standing up here this, this, this morning out of my comfort zone. 
It's a step of faith for me to get on Facebook and look into that camera and, and, and speak in the morning uh, a devotional. That is not uh, my comfort zone. But it's a step of faith because I believe this is what God is leading me to do. And I'm simply saying to you this morning, my friends, that if you are going to be a hero of the faith, you've got to get out of your comfort zone as God leads you. You've got to take that step of faith and it might be something totally different. It might be we're out here totally different this this morning. <clears throat> And, 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 and this might, you know, I don't know where we'll go from here. We might not be on this stage. That I, I'm not going to, probably won't preach from the roof. I've heard of some preachers getting on top of the churches and preaching. I don't know. I, I doubt I'll do that. I'm too old to do that. But I will say this, that sometimes we just got to get out of our comfort zone. God will lead us to do things that we've never done before. This week, I know uh, Fonda started a little thing on Facebook. And she herself said, this is not what I'm used to doing. It's out of my comfort zone. When God leads you to do something, it tests us. It's a test of faith. And I'm simply saying to you this morning, if you're going to be a hero of the faith, then you are going to have to get out of a comfort zone as God leads you, just like Abraham and his wife, Sarah. It's a test of faith. Now, this is a test of our faith. It's a test that everyone's going to go through at some time in your life. It is a test that you must pass in order to be a hero of faith. Some of you may say, well, I'll, you know, uh, 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 well, let me just give you an example. Some of you, the Lord might lead when we all get back together now, when we all get back in the sanctuary, which is coming, but when we all get back together, some of you, the Lord might lead to stand and share a testimony. I'm not used to, I can't stand up in front of people and talk. Well, the Lord may be leading you in that direction, getting out of your comfort zone. And can you imagine the blessing that you, God could use and work through you to bless other people? So uh, that's just an example. It, it might be taking food to someone. It might be, uh, you know, uh, uh, singing a song out of your comfort zone. I'm just not comfortable with that. Well, God leads us. That, that's, that's the way God, uh, you know, often does just with, with uh, Abraham and Sarah. He moved them out of their comfort zone, what they were used to, and took them to a place they'd never been before. So this is the first test that we're all going to have if we're going to be a hero of faith. A second test that Abraham and Sarah went through was a test of the promised covenant. Now the reason this was such a test was because this test took 25 years for it to come to pass. It was a test of patience. Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. Now remember in 12 verse 1 it says, Get out of your country from your family from your father's house to a land that I will show you. In chapter 12 verse 2 it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. In chapter 15, verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven. Count the stars if you are able to count number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord. And he accounted it to him for righteousness. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? And then we go on into Genesis chapter number 18, uh, verses 9 to 14. They said to him, where's Sarah, your wife? And he said, here in the tent. He said, well, uh, uh, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. Behold, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. And so there's this promise that she is going to have a son. It, it was promised all the way back when he said, leave your country, go to another country. And you're going to be blessed and I'm going to multiply your descendants. But he didn't have any children. He didn't have any children. And now here again he says your wife's going to have a baby. This is a promise. Now this, the, the, the interesting part was it's, all, it's 25 years later after he left. After the promise was initially given. Now I know that there are things. If I would ask you this morning if there are things that you have prayed for and never seen accomplished. It may be for an unsaved loved one or a job. It could be anything that the Lord has promised you, but you haven't seen the results yet. Now listen, I want to tell you that God is desiring for us when He makes a promise, when He tells you something and you hold on to that, it might take a long time, but it will come to pass. I shared this in one of my devotions this week, but I want to tell you 10 years ago, my wife and I began praying for something 
that we felt was the will of God. We knew it was the will of God. Ten years ago, we began praying. And through those ten years, there were times we thought it was going to happen. But what we've been praying for never happened. But I, uh, this past Tuesday, March the 31st, we got a phone call. And it was the beginning of the answer to that prayer. The, 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 the things began to develop to the answer to that prayer. I want to tell you, ten years ago, God promised us something. Now it's coming to pass, but friends, I don't claim to be a hero of faith, but I do say this, that if you will be faithful to God and you will continue to trust in His Word, it may take a long time, but He will fulfill the promise that He has given to you. We can't give up when God has promised us things. We can't see it. It's like the song, The Waymaker. In fact, I want to, when we come up and our crew comes back up here, I want us to sing that song if we could, The Waymaker. But it's like that song. It says, uh, it says even though I can't see it, uh, He's working. Even though I can't feel it, He's working. It may not be in my time schedule, but He is working. My friends, uh, we would like, if it was our desire, all of this would be over with tomorrow. But I can say that God is working in the midst of this. We don't know what he's doing but God is working in the midst of all of the confusion in our country today it might get worse before it gets better but that doesn't mean God's not working he is working and so a hero of faith will continue to hold on to the promise no matter how long it takes a hero of faith will be tested by waiting very seldom does a promise from God come immediately there's a time of waiting. Psalm 130, verses 5 and 6 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in His Word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. When I read that, more than those who watch for the morning. How many, uh, I can't say how many, I'll be having horns blow here. But some of you uh, remember years ago, some of you, uh, uh, Vonda, Marcy, some of you here, you remember years ago we had, when I was a, a principal in the school, we had a rockathon. Remember that? Uh, Miss Colifer there? We had the rockathon. Miss Jennifer over there, we had the rockathon. We get out here and all night long, what it was, we were raising money for Speed the Light or raising money for, uh, for something anyway. And we'd have kids get out here in the rocking chair and they would rock all night long. They would have uh, videos, they would have books to read and everything, but they couldn't get out of their rocking chair. They had to rock all night long. And so they rock, we would do something like start at eight o'clock or, or nine, 10, something like that, and go to about eight or nine in the morning. Well, I can tell you, those kids were watching for the morning. They were looking for, they were getting about three or four in the morning. Their eyes would get droopy and they would start to fall asleep. And somebody beside them would start pushing them and rock them. Remember that, Doug? Uh, they'd start pushing them and rocking them. You know, you can't stop rocking. If you stop rocking, we don't get any money. So they had to keep rocking them. And they were just waiting and hoping and watching for the day to break because they were looking forward. I thought about that when I read this. We've got to wait on the Lord. Just like the watchman is waiting for the day to come. We've got to wait. It may take a while. It may seem like forever. But a hero of faith is going to wait on God for the promise to come to pass. The hero of faith will stand the test of waiting for the promise like Abraham and Sarah. And finally, the third test of Abraham and Sarah was the test of sacrificing Isaac. Genesis chapter 22. There could be no greater test than to be tested by giving up that which is the dearest to us. That which means the most. Now, most of us, all of us here, I know our children are the most important things to us on this earth. <clears throat> but in this case, God wanted to see how dedicated Abraham and Sarah were. I, I wonder if Sarah had any idea what was going on when Abraham left with Isaac to go make that sacrifice. I don't know. I know that Hollywood or somebody put out a movie that showed that she did and she was pleading, crying, don't go and all this stuff. I don't know. We're not told. But Abraham's confidence that he would return with the son is so evident. In Genesis chapter 22, verse number 5, it says, he tells his servants, he said, look, you guys stay here with the donkeys. The lad and I are going to go yonder and worship and we will come back. You know, it's kind of like, uh, what does old Arnold Schwarzenegger 
I'll be back. Well, this was Abraham saying, I'll be back. We will be back, me and the son. My son, we're coming back. He had a faith. He knew that God promised him that boy. And God, no matter what he said, God was going to take care of him. You and I know the end of the story. He didn't know the end of the story. He had faith. Even when God indicated he would take the most precious thing from him. Even in verse number 8, when his son began questioning about the sacrifice, I've always wondered what, what Isaac may have been feeling during that time. Abraham responded to Isaac, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham was so confident that God would spare his son. Why? Because 25 years, or actually it's more than that, that, that now, but, but he was promised 25 years then the child was born and we don't know exactly how old he was at this time but he could have been 10, 12 years old that would have been 35, 40 years ago God had promised that this child would be and come into being and this child would have children and Abraham's descendants would go on and on as the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea and that same God that led him from his own country that same God knew that if he had to, and Abraham knew that if he had to sacrifice his son, that that same God would raise him up again. That is a hero of faith. What about you and I this morning? Are we willing to give the best that we have? Are we willing to make the ultimate sacrifice? Are we so sure that God is leading us that regardless of what things look like, we're going to follow and be obedient to Him? I can assure you that we will be tested along the way. If you serve God very long, you're going to be tested. Psalm chapter 119, 71. It says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I may learn your statutes. I don't know about you, but I don't like afflictions. But the psalmist says, It's good that I'm afflicted so I can learn from you. How many of you know and realize that I think, and I really believe with all my heart, that through all of this, in fact, I read it, I read it from the secular uh, uh, commentaries. That, I mean, not commentaries, but the, sec the, the guys who, who are radio, the news people. But I read it from them. They said, you know what? We're learning something through all this. And I believe that through all of this in the spiritual realm, we are learning something in, 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 through our afflictions. Psalm 119.92, it says, Unless your law had been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. Therefore, my friends, I encourage you that in our time of trouble, in our time of testing, that let's consume ourselves in the laws of God or the Word of God. Because it's the Word of God that's going to hold us up. It's the Word of God that's going to keep us uh, uh, on solid ground during times of, of bad weather, so to speak, in a, in a spiritual sense. There may be some that are tested physically. But God has not forgotten you. His promises to you are still true. And He cannot fail. Some of you are tested financially right now. He still owns the cattle of a thousand hills. And He will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Many of you are being tested with things that are the most precious to you. But God's promises trump anything that may look like it's going to destroy the dream that you may have had. We simply must continue to have faith in Him. I want to just close with these few verses and if my musicians and singers could come back. In Hebrews chapter 11, the latter verses say this. And let me, this is so important. It says this, These all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They didn't see it come to pass. Listen, we don't see. We don't see. Heroes of faith are going to be tested with getting out of your comfort zone. Heroes of faith are going to be tested by patience, having to wait. Heroes of faith are going to be tested by sometimes having to sacrifice the thing that you love the most. But heroes of faith will pass the test. And I can truly say that we are being tested as a nation. And if anyone passes the test, it must be God's people. 
We must show the world that our God is faithful and we can trust Him in the most difficult times. So my encouragement to each of you here today, let us be faithful and be a hero of faith during this COVID-19 test. Amen? Amen. Can we sing that song, Michael, about the, uh, uh, the, the way maker? Can we do that this, this, this morning? And just sing along with us. He is doing something when we can't see it. He's, he's working when we can't feel it. He's a way maker. Amen. Father, I want to thank you. Lord, I thank you for the promises that you have given to us. Lord, I, I don't know what you're doing, but Lord, I want to be a hero of faith and trust in you. God, I, I don't, I, it, this isn't comfortable to me, but God, I know that it's what you have designed for me as far as the, the platform that I have and the Facebook things, God, it, it, for me, it's, it's out of my comfort zone, God, but I have to lay it in your hands. I have to give it to you because, Lord, this is what you've given to me. Lord, I just pray that each of us, as we examine ourselves, that we will not worry about being comfortable. We don't worry about how long it's taking. We won't worry about what the cost may be. But, Lord, we just want to be faithful to you. Hallelujah.